Welcome to a brief introduction to the simulation we'll be using for wave interference. This is the website FET. Uh, what you'll do is you'll uh, download or run this uh, kind of Java app and it'll help you with the homework sheets that we have. The, I'll go ahead and switch over to the actual app itself. When you open it the first time, it looks like this. Now, on your homework sheet, it actually asks you to get like a tank of water and start doing some ripple experiments. You're not going to be able to do that from home. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do it with the simulation. It's nice because you can control a lot of things, and you can kind of actually do little experiments yourself to help you better understand interference. A couple things to set up initially. We'll leave this on water. What I recommend you do is uh, hit the plus sign there and make this as big as you can. Um, to aid in seeing the waves, I recommend that you crank the amplitude up to the maximum. I've got this on pause, so I'll go ahead and start it. Now, my, your animation will run more smoothly than this. This is be, It's slowed down because I'm capturing it. But you can kind of see there, by making a large amplitude, you get nice bright and then dark bands. Now, uh, I also recommend that you take the frequency and go kind of middle-high with the frequency. Now, you should see what happened there. Since the wave speed does not change, changing the frequency higher makes your wavelength shorter. I'll go ahead and let that settle in for a second so I get a good pattern and then pause it. Now, uh, you can actually use some of the tools here. You can kind of see over on the side there's a measuring tape. When you touch that, you, you actually get a little tape there. And you can use this to do things like, for instance, measure the wavelength. Now, the reason you will want to do that for the uh, lab is it's going to ask you in the second part of the lab when you set up two slits, it's going to ask you to set the separation of the slits to three times the wavelength. And this little tool, measuring tape, will give you the wavelength, and then you can make the other setting. We'll come to that. I'll show you, try and show you that later. This first thing, though, the first thing that the, the uh, lab sheet is going to ask you to do is simply add a, um, add a barrier. And the way you do that is this. So let me just highlight these controls over here. You kind of see over on the side, uh, you have this ability to set up barriers. Now, the first one we're going to set up is one slit, and then after that we're going to do two slits. Uh, since I'm here, I'll show you some other controls as well down uh, down in the bottom area. You can kind of see here that once you have set a, uh, a slit, you can set the width of it. You can drag the barrier to different locations, and you can change the separation between the slits. All of those will be relevant when we uh, actually set up some simulations. Okay, so this is what it looks like, uh, for instance, when you set up a single slit. You can kind of see a barrier there. Uh, in the first case, you want this barrier, uh, you can slide the barrier either way, but you want it kind of, kind of medium close to the source, something like this, and you want for the first one the slide, uh, the slit to be nice and wide, maybe close to its maximum. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start the simulation, and you're going to take a look at what's happening on the other side of the barrier. And then it'll ask you to take the slit width down and see what happens on the other side of the barrier. And I'll answer some questions associated with that. That's the first portion of the uh, lab. Then what you'll do, let me go ahead and pause this. Then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and add uh, two slits. And let me see if I can get that right. There we go. Now this is kind of weird because I've got the slit width so wide, but if I drag the width of the slit down and the separation of the slits across, you can see now I have actually two different um, two different locations there. Now I'll set it at maybe uh, close to where they asked. We, we, was that about one and a half? So I'm going to say maybe somewhere in here would be about three times for the separation and a reasonable slit width. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is start the simulation again. Oh, something messed up there. Let me go back to, that's a little better, slit width, something like that. And I'll set it, uh, let it set to, it takes a second to settle in, and I'll just let it set uh, sit here and settle in. But you should start seeing now uh, interference patterns on the other side. Uh, you will have noticed that when you have two slits like this, they act like independent sources. So really what you're looking at is two sources that are in phase, and they create an interference pattern on the other side. It's not perfectly clear, but you should be able to see... Uh, let me try and highlight some lines here. You should be able to see 
a uh, some nodal lines, uh, maybe a nodal line somewhere like in here, another one here, another one here. You can kind of see a pattern of nodal lines that are developing associated with this. And um, your uh, the actual lab sheet asks you to make predictions based on what we did in the lab previous to as to the location of those areas of constructive and destructive interference. The last thing I'm going to show you is the very last page of the uh, worksheet deals with light. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and set you up to get the best use of the simulation using light. There's a slider here that I can change the color of the light. And when you're changing color of light, you're actually changing its frequency. So you can play around with that and see how it affects the frequency and the wavelength. But for now, I found that if you go maximum amplitude and you do this kind of a crazy green, you get the um, easiest to see interference patterns. Now, there, I've got one more thing to show you here on this, is what we're going to do is we're going to set this up with two slits, and uh, what you want is the slits to be kind of close, uh, medium close to the source. You want the width to, of the slits to be fairly narrow, and you'll want the separation. You can play around the separation, but you want the separation somewhere in the middle like this too. And you can kind of see now as I let that settle in, I'm starting to get an interference pattern. Now, what's different about this is in reality, when we're dealing with light, between this, this uh, barrier that we have here, I should mark this off, between the barrier that we have in this case and our light source, um, we can't, you can see here on the simulation that you have these areas of constructive interference, kind of like a maximums here, something like this. And then you can kind of see destructive interference happening along these lines, something like this. But in reality, with light, you can't see what's happening uh, on the other side of this barrier. In other words, light in air is invisible. So the way you see an interference pattern when you're dealing with light is you set up a screen. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and turn on this feature of the simulation where I can show a screen. And this will help you quite a bit for the lab. Notice that what we were dealing before with a two-dimensional picture of constructive interference and destructive interference when projected onto a screen creates lines, bright lines or bands, and dark bands. And they're, you can see how they line up with the areas of constructive interference and destructive interference. Now this right here is going to be very helpful. You'll have some questions associated with this banding and how it would look on a screen. But uh, when we actually get to the lab, let me uh, draw one more thing over the top of this, is uh, when we actually get to the lab, what we'll be doing is we'll be using, instead of, instead of what we did before, which was to set up some sort of an angular measurement, for instance, we were interested in, for example, where this nodal line would be in reference to our center line. When you're dealing with a screen, you're not dealing with an angle anymore, you're dealing with a distance, like a distance x over from the center uh, bright fringe. So what we'll be doing is we'll be doing measurements from a central bright fringe and then actually taking this a distance away and marking that off. And you'll see that we're able to come up with a mathematical relationship, just like we were with for theta, we can come up with a mathematical relationship for this x or this location referencing the central bright fringe to any other constructive or destructive interference for light. That's what's coming up in the lab. Hopefully this helps you with the sheet, and I hope you enjoy the uh, exercise, and I'll see you guys on Friday.